Good morning, guys. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everyone doing? It is good to see you all logging on this morning. I hope you guys can hear me. I was having a little bit of a blonde moment. No shade to the blondes. Um, can every okay good yes everyone can hear me that is good good morning good morning so good to see you ladies see you so funny see you logging in and joining good morning good morning um happy Tuesday we just have a couple of days left in the month of September good morning from Austin from France good morning good morning thank you ladies for joining us so much and just being so faithful to this ministry, to share it, to share from London, praise God, um, to share it and to share what you've been learning. Um, you guys have been sowing into this ministry physically and spiritually, and we just thank you again for that. And I just want to, oh, Austin, Texas, oh, that makes me miss home. <laughs> um, I just want to thank you guys for myself and Kia, for you being so faithful in, in supporting uh, St. Louis um, and supporting us and, and really coming to um, to surrender your hearts to God and to surrender your minds. And I was traveling this weekend in Milwaukee and Chicago um, for Wives in Waiting, and I just kept hearing so many ladies talk about um, how Dope Crowns has blessed them. So we are just really grateful for you um for you, again, just being so faithful and being so open um, to what the Lord wants to do. And like I said, sacrificing your morning or if you're overseas, your afternoon or any time just to spend time with us in prayer. Um, that is that is just a blessing. That's a blessing. So this month we have been talking about the wives you don't know or the wives that are not as popular, um, <laughs> not as popular uh, to be talked about. In the Christian environment. And this month has been truly um, a blessing to me to just be able to study these women because even though, you know, we teach you guys or lead prayer, don't feel like that we knew everything about these women or these things that we talk about either because I know every time that we study and prepare to bring something to you, the Lord just always pricks and, and convicts our hearts. Mine, you know, I can speak for me. I'm pretty sure for Kia too. Hey, um, hi, Jerry. Um, pricks my heart about what the um, what the Lord wants me to talk about. So this morning is no different. So really quickly, let's go to Genesis 25, 1 through 6. Genesis 25, 1 through 6. Um, that says, Abraham took another wife whose name was Keturah. She bore him Zimram, Jokshan, Medan, Midian, Ishbak, and Shua. Jokshan fathered Sheba and Dedan. The sons of Dedan were Asurim, Lechishim, and Lemam. The sons of Midian were Ephath, Epher, Hanok, Abida, and Elda. All these were the children of Keturah. Abraham gave all he had to Isaac, but to the sons of Keturah and Hagar, Abraham gave gifts. And while he was still living, he sent them away from his son Isaac, eastward to the east country. Um, so you heard, heard her name. Um, the wife we're going to talk about this morning is Keturah. And when Ki and I were, were talking about the um the women that we would study uh it is too early to say those names we gonna we gonna say it anyway because you needed to hear what the bible has to say about her so just in that that scripture alone we hear that um who her children were and who she was married to she was abraham's second wife and this morning i just feel like this particular message is for a certain group of women because, and I'm trying, I'm gonna try not to cry this morning, but um, women who feel like you have been overlooked for whatever reason. You know, this particular wife was his second wife, but some of us have been overlooked for lots of different things. And for those of you who don't know, I am um, a second 
wife. Uh, my husband was married before we were married. So this, um, this hits home for me for a couple of different reasons, but she was his second wife, but, um, his last. So keep that, he, she was his second wife, but she was also his last wife. Uh, Abraham took her to be his wife in his old age. And the Bible talks about her being a young woman. So a man who's at the end of his life takes on a woman who really has so much of her life to live, so much of her life to give. She, these are her childbearing years. She bears children to a man who's at the end of his life. And, and again, she's, she's second. And back in biblical days, being the second wife um, made you like second class. But again, she was his second wife, but also his last. So, so don't miss that. She had six sons. He already had two. He had Ishmael and Isaac. But the addition of Keturah's six sons gave him eight. And for those of you that know the biblical meaning of eight, it is a new beginning, um, which is interesting because he's at the end of his life, but she's giving him a new beginning by what she was carrying. And when I, I read this and studied it, and I'm like, he's old, you know, he's 175 and she's a young woman, but all the Bible talks about is that they were married and she bore him children. And if you think about that, that kind of love to be a woman in her young years and to be with a man who who's at the end of his life. This is not about um, glamour or, or anything like that. She didn't marry this man to be made famous. So so constantly um, she's reminded of she's she's not Sarah. She's not Sarah. She's not the wife of the promise. She's not even birthing his promise. But yet she married him anyway. And when you study Keturah, it talks about the love that she has for Abraham as his second wife. The love that she has for him is based on devotion and servanthood. His second wife was not for glamour, but she married him because of devotion and and servanthood. And this morning, some of you have been serving, but sometimes feeling overlooked because it's not glamorous. It's not where everybody knows your name. People are not applauding you. And some people even giving you the side eye because you're the second, not the first, not the one where all the promises are attached to, the one that's hidden behind the scenes. Um, but she kept serving anyway. She wasn't concerned about that because there there's lots of things that she could have been doing instead of just serving she was a young woman she could have been doing lots of things young women back then would have still been kept by their fathers but she chose to marry a man that immediately pushed her into servanthood not a man that romanced her he was he was too old for that he was already past that season of his life he was looking for a woman because the Bible says Abraham took a wife. He was looking for a woman who could care for him in this season of his life. This season of his life, he married her so she could help him transition into his new beginning. And it's funny because, again, he's dying, but the birth of her children is giving her, giving him a new beginning. And and. Just again, as, as, as I studied her, I thought about what her life must have been like, because the Bible tells us that even in dying, he overlooked her children to give everything that he had to Isaac. That particular part of the scripture even compares her to Hagar, who was not even his wife. But she continued to serve him. Can you imagine how much she heard about Sarah all the time? This man even decided he wanted to be buried near Sarah. In his death, he chose the first wife. He didn't say, you know, go find a burial plot where we can be buried together. He wanted to be buried with the first wife. Sarah, the one who called him Lord. Sarah, who bore his promise in her old age. That's who he wanted to be buried near. But his second wife was his last wife. She had to honor 
the wishes of her husband, even though it dishonored her. She wasn't concerned about herself. She was not concerned about someone knowing that she was Abraham's wife. She was devoted to serving him. But the only way that you can do something like that, the only way you can serve in that capacity is if man is not your focus. She was the second, but she was also the last. God was honoring her because she honored him. Because she was able to birth something that gave Abraham a new beginning. But I want to go a little bit deeper because, um, again, being his second wife, this was a blended family. This was a blended family. And the Bible never talks about her complaining. The Bible never talks about her saying, I don't want to hear about Sarah. I don't want to hear about Isaac. The Bible never talks about that. And in everything that we see in the Bible, she does not even speak. And last night, if you follow me, um, I was talking about the power of being silent because sometimes you have to be quiet to really realize what God is doing. God allowed her to be the second wife, but also the last, because there's something so beautiful about Couture in her service, in her devotion to Abraham, and it's in her name, in her name alone. Her name, Keturah, means, means incense or sweet fragrance. Incense or sweet fragrance. Her name means that. So before she even became Abraham's wife, the very essence of who she was, was a sweet fragrance. So when she became his second wife, she brought that sweet fragrance. And again, because she ushered him into the new beginning of him ascending to be with God, he needed that sweet fragrance that Keturah brought. And in this scripture in 2 Corinthians 2, 14 through 17, really messed me up as we talk about Keturah. 2 Corinthians 2, 14, 17 said, but thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and through us spreads and makes evident everywhere the sweet fragrance, fragrance of the knowledge of him. Verse 15, for we are the sweet fragrance of Christ to God, discernible both, and this is the part, discernible both among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing, to the latter one, an aroma from death to death, a fatal or offensive odor, but to the other, an aroma from life to life. And who is adequate and sufficiently qualified for these things? Keturah's offering to God was a sweet fragrance because she was not concerned with being second. She was making a lasting impression on Abraham. She was making a lasting impression to God because you can be second and still make a lasting impression. But the lasting impression is made with the sweet, sweet fragrance and the sweet, sweet aroma of what we offer to God. Ketura offered God a fragrant offering. And that is what you have to keep in mind. No matter what position you are in, what are you offering to God? Not how it looks to people. To people, she was second. But to God, she was last. A lasting impression to be made on this man when he was ascending to be with the Lord. She was with him in his dying days. And what she brought to him was a sweet aroma of servanthood, a sweet aroma of devotion. She was not looking for accolades. She was not looking for applause. That was Sarah. That was what Sarah brought to him. We know Abraham because of Sarah, but it was Keturah's sweet aroma, her sweet fragrance that ushered him into a new beginning with the Lord. Because the Bible says that the, the death, when it's a, a filthy, offensive aroma, is to death. But it was life that Keturah gave him, life in God. Our sweet aroma and what we offer in our servanthood, regardless of our position, regardless of what other people are saying. And for those of you that are specifically in, in, in blended families, please remember, you don't have to speak ill will about anyone that came before you because your position is important to God. If you offer your sweet aroma of servanthood to him, 
People don't have to know your name, whether you are married or single, for God to be pleased with you. It is what you offer to him, the sacrifice of your life that brings other people to Christ, that ushers people into a new season with the Lord. We are in the last quarter of the year. Are you smelling good in the presence of God? Is what you're offering sweet and pleasing to the Lord? That is what is important. So whether you are second or third, the lasting impression that you need to leave is a sweet aroma to him. A sweet aroma to the Lord. Keturah married Abraham after the glamour had faded. But but 2 Corinthians 2, 14, 17 says that the aroma that we offer up and this is the part that we miss as believers. The aroma that we offer up is discernible by those who believe God and those that don't. And that's not Shantae, that's that's the Bible. Verse 15 says, for we are the sweet fragrance of Christ, discernible both among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. So whether people believe or not, people know the beauty, the authenticity, or the counterfeit of your spirit. What does it smell like to God? Not what it looks like to people. Because some things look really good on the outside, but stink in front of the Lord. Some things look glamorous on the outside, but are putrid smell to God and to other people because what we don't realize is people are drawn to the outside. But when you get close enough to see Keturah from the outside, she looks so insignificant because she was second, again, overlooked. But what she was offering up to God was a sweet aroma because we, we talk about Sarah all the time, but Sarah moved ahead of God's timing. The Bible does not talk about what her offering was like it was because she was carrying the promise but when you look into into Keturah's life the Bible doesn't talk about what even happened to her after Abraham died the Bible does not even talk about what she did after Abraham died the Bible talks about who she was married to and who she gave birth to that's why I read the names of her son who she was married to Abraham and who she gave birth to her six sons what that means, what that's significant of, who she served, and what was in her. Who she served and what was in her. So you might be second. You might have been overlooked. But when you're offering up the sweet fragrance, it's about who you're serving and what God has placed in you. Because even though Keturah was second, that did not disqualify her sons from being part of Abraham's legacy. Because what was inside of her was irreplaceable. And she ushered that in with her sweet fragrance of servanthood and devotion. What are you doing with the position that you're in? What are you offering up to God? Who are you serving? How are you serving? And does it give room for you to give birth to what's inside of you? Because again, just to be a little bit transparent, my husband's first wife has given birth to a natural child. I have not. And I could be so focused on what has been birthed naturally from the first that I don't give birth to what I need to spiritually as the second when you are focused on what's on the outside on what people can see you are not offering up anything sweet to God if your heart is ugly it's not sweet to God some of you are holding some things in staying in the shadows because your heart is broken because you don't realize the beauty of being last it's not the second that's the beauty it's the last that she ushered him in to his, de to his destiny with the Lord. Yes, Sarah gave birth to Isaac. But look what Keturah gave birth to. A sweet aroma. If you have ever been in the presence of anyone who is losing their life. Breathing their last breath. The anointing that it takes to help usher them into the presence of the Lord is nothing that can be done on stage, nothing that can be done in front of the lights. It takes someone who does not mind her name not 
being known for the sake of God to be lifted up. The Bible says, if you lift me up, I will draw all men to me. The aroma is discernible to those who believe the Lord and those that don't. Let's go to God in prayer. God, I thank you this morning that you are a God of restoration, that you are a God that sits on your throne, God, and you are a fulfiller of your promises, Lord. Lord, I thank you this morning for every woman with the spirit of Keturah, God, that feels that she has been overlooked, that feels that she has been forgotten, God, but this morning you were honoring her for the sweet aroma of her service, the sweet aroma of her devotion, God, not because she has chased the stage or chased a title, God, but because she has chosen to serve you for what you placed inside of her, God. I thank you this morning for the gift of her sacrifice, God, that she did not mind giving up her life for the calling that you have placed on her, God. Lord, this morning, whether that's in marriage, in ministry, in business, God, to her family, God, that she doesn't mind sacrificing those years of her life that other people feel belong in another position or another place. God, this morning, we thank you for the sweet aroma and the sweet fragrance that are ushering people into a new beginning, into a new destiny with you, God, that she is not looking for accolades or for her name to be known, God, but to know that people know you because of her service and because of her devotion to you. Lord, this morning I speak to every Keturah spirit to not focus on where she is in line, but to realize that you have given her the ability to place a lasting impression on eternity, a lasting impression on someone that, 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 that is in the last phase of, of this season of their lives, God, even not in, in the spirit of death, even not in their lives being taken away, God, but to give them a new beginning because of who she serves. Lord, help us to realize the power in who we serve and to remember to point people towards you, God, that even in our position of second, that we can honor you in everything that we do, that we don't have to speak every time we have an opportunity to speak, that we don't have to give our opinion every time we have an opportunity to give it, Father God, that we don't have to, to, to open our mouths every time a thought comes across our mind. God, help us to inherit the spirit of Keturah, God, because in the record of your word, there was not a time that she even uttered a phrase. She was there to serve and to serve alone. God, I thank you this morning that we are inheriting hearts of service and hearts of devotion, not just to our husbands or future husbands, God, but to you, that we would lay our lives down, that we would give you our good years, God, that we rebuke the spirit, God, of putting you on the back burner until we become too old to do anything else. Lord, this morning, I speak to the hearts of young women, Father God, whether they are young naturally or young spiritually, that are in their formidable years, their child bearing years, Father God, that in this season, that things are being birthed from them because of their service and because of their devotion to you, God. Lord, I thank you this morning that I am speaking to fertile ground this morning, that in their wombs, God, that you have given something that would birth an entire nation, Father God, that would change lives, God, but help them to see that giving birth to it is rooted in their servanthood and in their devotion to you, God. And Lord, let us not be so moved by the glamour of, of those with the spirit of Sarah, God, that we don't really realize the importance and the significance of who we are in you. So Lord, I thank you this morning that bondage is being broken, that these women can come out of hiding, that they no longer let their position drive them to, to a place of guilt and shame, God, but they realize that in you, that you have placed them in a place that, that leaves a lasting impression, God, that impacts, Father God, and that draws people to you. Lord, I, I speak significance to them right now in the name of Jesus. I speak importance to them in the name of Jesus. I speak worth over them in the name of Jesus, Father God, that you have never forgotten them, Lord, that you have never left them, that you have never forsaken them, God, because your word and your promises are true. And Lord, help them to surrender their plans to you, God. Help them to surrender their, their perfection to you, God, and to realize all that you need is the sweet aroma of servanthood, God, the sweet aroma of devotion from them, God, to just give their lives to you living for you, God. Lord, I thank you this morning that you are restoring worth, God. 
that you were removing the scales from their eyes this morning to see themselves as holy and acceptable, no matter if they have been second, God, no matter if they have been third, Father, but you have positioned them to make a lasting impression. God, I thank you that we rebuke the spirit of the putrid aroma of false humility, Father God, and that you give the women who who smell good in your presence, God, the confidence to step out, the confidence to trust who you have made them to be, God, to know that where they are positioned is not by mistake, is not by coincidence, it's not by punishment, God, because you can trust them with the lasting impression. You can trust them to be to be good stewards over the influence that you have given them, Father God, and that you can trust them because they are not chasing public applause. They are not chasing a name, God, that they are not chasing a platform, God, but they are truly surrendered and devoted to you. So, Lord, I thank you this morning that what you were doing is something new, that what you have given them is not like anything else, and they realize that they are a sweet aroma to you, God. Lord, I thank you, and I honor you this morning. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, amen. Well, <laughs> um, I just, I, I truly pray because I feel like there are some, some women who don't realize the value of your position and realize that you have the ability to make an impact and an impression like no one else, but just make sure you keep it sweet to God. Sweet to God. Have a great day. Um, you can share the broadcast for 24 hours. We love you ladies so much, so, so much, and pray for you consistently. Have a great day. Love you. It's not stopping.